Hello again everybody, I'm Dark Hour 717 Today we are going to be looking at the newest powerhouse within the Star Citizen universe. Before we get started, don't forget to stick around till the end of the video and find out how you can get entered in for our October giveaway, which is going to be the 400i with LTI and of course all the paints that are available for it. The Crusader Hercules A2 is new to the verse and is currently in use in the PTU 3.15 and is soon going to be moving over to the live universe. Now this ship is the third in the line of Hercules, which consists of the cargo variant, which is the C2, the military variant, which is the M2, and of course the A2, which is the bomber variant. All three of these ships serve a unique role and purpose in the verse, and the A2's role is simply destruction. The A2 is classified as a size 5 military class ship. Its role and purpose is strictly as a bomber. Its length is 94 meters, width is 70 meters, and its height is 23 meters, so this is not a small ship by any means. Its top SEM speed is going to be 135 meters per second with an afterburner speed of 963 meters per second and has a hydrogen fuel capacity of 5,044,000 liters and then quantum fuel capacity is 88,000 liters and the cargo space is the smallest of all the Hercules at 216 SCU. Now this also has a max crew of seven, which is pilot plus six support crew. Now keep in mind, this is a ship guy. It's not a should you buy guy. Currently the A2 is not available for pledge, but when it is, it typically costs 700 US dollars. And when it is on sale, occasionally they have war bonds for 600 US dollars. It is expected that the ship will be available for sale at launch with 315. And if not, it's definitely gonna be available at IAE in November. As for an in-game purchase, I would not expect that we're going to see this as something you can get with AUEC until possibly 316 at the latest, and AUEC cost is going to be unknown at this time. The truth is, this is an extremely large pledge, and I would say that for most, this is going to be more than worth the grind in-game to get with AUEC once it's available. Now, the A2 has a number of similarities to its sister ships, the C2 and M2, especially with its ease of flight. This has excellent handling and atmosphere, and as well as out of it, to be honest. The ship tends to respond quickly to commands and speeds up well, and for a ship its size, it really slows down in an acceptable time frame and actually much faster than you would expect it to. Its maneuvering capabilities are quick, and this ship really shines flying in atmosphere, but then again, it's really where it was designed to shine due to its role as a bomber or cargo or a military transport. The A2 and actually all the Hercules models have all the attributes of a ship that is a great option for those learning to fly larger ships and get comfortable and used to the handling that comes along with that. The A2 especially does one thing extremely well and that is to rain hellfire on the ground below from any height that still has gravitational pull down to the surface. With its slick stealth flat black paint and red accents, if you see this thing coming over the horizon at you, definitely worry and accept what is about to come. Now stock, the A2 comes very well equipped. It's actually gonna have two size three full block military grade B shields, fully charges in about 77 seconds. It has two size three super drive military grade C power plants, two size three mercury military grade C coolers, and one size three Pontus quantum drive. Now that Pontus drive is actually gonna give you very reasonable times. Port Olisar to Hurston's three minutes and 40 seconds. Port Olisar to Arcorp's 4 minutes and 33 seconds, and Port Olisar to Microtech's only 5 minutes and 53 seconds. In all honesty, having flown this numerous times, the A2 is equipped in a more than adequate manner. Any upgrades would add to its ability, but really is not necessary as upgrading only increases the shield power by 5%, power plants are going to increase by 16%, cooling by 10%, and the quantum drive is only going to increase by 10% if you move everything up to a grade A. And really with the quantum, it only equates out to 27 second difference. If you want to upgrade them, you can, but I would say the cost of the fuel efficiency, as well as the cost of the components, it's not really needed unless you're really that person that needs to peg out every single stat for each level. Now, as far as weapons, this thing is equally well equipped. And again, I really do not see a real need for upgrades as this is a true beast of a ship. Stock, it's going to be equipped with two size 4 gimbaled M6A laser cannons, which are going to be pilot controlled. You have three dual size 4 M6A remote laser cannons. 
two size five Omniski 15 remote laser cannons and two dual size five M7A remote laser cannons. Has no pilot controlled missiles, but it does have those four size 10 Moab bombs. The stats on the Moabs, I had a little difficulty finding anything on that. Even SC tools still doesn't list the specs as far as how much power is packed in those things, but it does create one hell of an explosion. And again, I don't really see a need to upgrade any of these, but if I were to recommend anything, the only thing I would really change is take the gimbals off the two size four M6A laser cannons for the pilot control and swap a fixed size five on there. Most likely the Galderine is probably gonna be the best option and that will add a little extra firepower for the pilot. The Hercules A2 is outfitted also to take care of its crew. It's got spacious interior, plenty of room for additional support vehicles. We actually got a Nova Tonk, an Ursa, an X-85, an Argo Cargo, and a Cyclone all in the bag. Not that this is really going to be the average thing that people are going to do with this, but we wanted to test it out to see how much it could actually fit. And I was surprised as to how much we actually got in there and got it in there comfortable. The A2 does include a front and rear loading ramp, though the rear is more constricted because of the Moab stations, and it's not gonna allow wider vehicles through. So those bigger vehicles like the Tonk, you're gonna have to take in from the front. The cargo space is more than ample to carry what you need though. Once you move to the upper level using the elevator or the ladder, you're gonna have on the port side, the main remote turret station. Now the design is ideal as whichever seat you sit in automatically indicates which gun you're gonna control. The front left seat is going to be the front left gun, the right front seat the right front gun, and so on and so forth. Just past this, you're going to have the onboard armory, which consists of plentiful armor and weapon storage space. And leaving this area, you're going to go out to the main hall and to the rear. On both sides, you're going to have the component area of the A2 itself. There's also two convenient cross points that go over the center area of the interior to get you to the other side. And that's where you're gonna enter the hab area, which in the rear of the hab area, you have a small kitchen for the crew as well as seating space and accommodations to eat and relax. And then moving forward into the area, you have eight bunks with two restrooms. And then moving further forward, you'll find another door that goes out to the hallway. Follow that forward and it's going to take you over to the pilot house and there you're going to find a main pilot seat as well as a co-pilot who has control of the rear two remote turrets and a second support seat that currently has control of the front belly remote turret. Though in the future the plan is to convert this into a bombardier seat where the bomb controls will be moved to and operated by the person in that chair. Bombing in the A2 is easier than you would actually think. The UI is very user friendly and easy to read though only requires a little bit of practice to get accustomed to it. Ability to free drop or having the pilot set a marker gives options in how you're going to deploy your bombs. Now the actual release rate can be set up to as much as four bombs and the rate of release is going to be slow due to the need of having to move the next bomb into position before dropping. When a marker is set, it does feature an audible tone that ticks faster as you approach and indicates with a solid tone when to actually release. Once they are released though, gravity takes over and they float on down to wherever they're gonna hit. But be aware, the bombs are actually affected by outside influence such as the wind and other anomalies. This is where one weakness comes into play with the A2 and that's if another ship is nearby and can target and shoot the bomb, it will go off mid air. And it's more than capable of taking the A2 out if it's too close to it. The speed of descent is slow as it should be as these are gravity dependent and have no engine or smart guidance system. I will attest that there is an immense anticipation one can feel when they drop and wait anxiously for that explosion and it can seem like hours but when it happens it's absolutely amazing. In conclusion, the A2 is an amazing ship with more under its belt than just being a bomber. It's a beast of a ship with great amenities, excellent maneuverability, packs a wallop that will knock out almost anything. In Amarok Fang, we've used this to even take out the Idris from the Eckhart missions with little to no assistance from anybody else. We also operate this as an org to run several bounties and with it fully manned and a decent pilot, it makes extremely quick work of anything it goes after. The A2 will not be leaving my fleet at any time in the near future and it's going to obviously see a tremendous amount of use and I would say even more than the Hammerhead will. I hope this information has been helpful for everyone out there. Catch the stream though every Wednesday and Sunday night at 7pm Eastern Time on Twitch. 
And don't forget to get your entries in for our 400i giveaway for October. All you got to do is subscribe, leave a comment here on YouTube on any video or follow on Twitch. And if you do both, well, you're going to get two entries and you're going to double your chances. So good luck to everybody on that. Also know we have reduced our memberships here on YouTube and they are now as low as 99 cents and the highest is only $4.99 a month. And if you'd like to help support the channel, hit that join button and you can also get a link to my personal discord to participate in our monthly members only gameplay stream. Get into the verse with me through my discord and we will go in and do many different activities together. Also to help support, check out the Patreon page. There's a lot of great packages as well as our merch store. All of it goes right back into provide for our giveaways that we have to give back to you guys. But I really do want to say thank you to everybody for all the support. It is greatly appreciated and we will catch you next time.